The Bengals needed to build around Joe Burrow this offseason, and they took a step forward in the right direction on Friday morning. They signed veteran right tackle Riley Reef to a contract, bringing him to town to help keep Joe Burrow upright. Now, Reef played left tackle for most of his career, but he's going to slide to right tackle, assuming the personnel stays the same. I asked him about it, and he's like, man, I'll play anywhere. I just want to help the team win. This is the type of veteran the Bengals needed in that offensive line room. I know Frank Pollock is ecstatic, the Bengals offensive line coach, that they were able to land a player of Reef's caliber, bring him in with a group like Jonah Williams that has Jonah Williams. And he's a lot like Jonah, almost built like a guard, but trying to make his way into the NFL and be a successful tackle. Reef was able to do it. He's a former first round pick, played for the Lions and Vikings, was actually in Detroit with Bengals offensive coordinator Brian Callahan. And then he signed with the Vikings and had a good career there with Mike Zimmer and company. But they released him earlier this month. He's one of the many veterans that got released because of the the cap restraints. He's a cap casualty. The Bengals get to reap the, the rewards and bring in a guy like Reef. How did they get it done? Well, they all went out to dinner at the precinct, Jeff Ruby's precinct in Cincinnati on Thursday night. They took Reef out and it was a bunch of different players from Joe Burrow to Mike Hilton, all the new signees. Trey Hendrickson was there. Uh, Sam Hubbard was there. Chidobe Wuzier was also there, the new corner. And, and all of these guys were talking to him and recruiting him. And he said that the stake was pretty damn good too. So that certainly helped. And the Bengals had eight news conferences. So we heard from all of these new free agents. And the thing that they kept talking about was Burrow. And I think Mike Hilton said it best. He said he has an aura about him. And Reef said, that's a guy I want to block for. I can't wait to block for him. And you could just tell these guys buy into Joe Burrow. And we asked Brian Callahan about it. And he's like, yeah, they're seeing what we see every day in the building. And that's the thing. Bengals fans out there right now, it it matters, right? When we talk about the Kenny Galladay pursuit and is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Well, we don't know at this point as I'm recording this video. What I do know is that Joe Burrow is going to be a big reason why, if it does happen, that Galladay is playing for the Bengals. I think that's a big reason why Reef decided to come and play for the Bengals. And whether you're a Mike Hilton, whether you're a Wuzie, any of these guys, when you have the quarterback, you have a shot, and the Bengals have the quarterback, and he clearly is commanding respect from veterans across the NFL, and that's big time. As far as the Kenny Galladay situation goes, I think a lot of people wondering about that. Here's what I will say. I think the Bengals very much in it. It feels like he's going to end up taking a one-year deal. He's still visiting with the Giants on Friday, and who knows? Maybe he does take a multi-year deal in New York or a multi-year deal with another team. Who knows? Maybe the Bengals try to get him on a multi-year deal. There are benefits to that as well that I wrote about at allbengals.com. But the one thing that I think is interesting when you look at this Bengals group is what they did with Reef. They're recruiting. Mike Hilton told me, and I flat out asked him, have you reached out to any of these other guys to try to get him to Cincinnati? He DM'd Kenny Galladay. We know Joe Burrow has reached out to Kenny Galladay. This Bengals group is trying to come together to make it work and, and be successful. And it starts with guys recruiting guys, right? The, the Bengals, they brought Von Bell in last offseason. Well, the safety, he showed up and showed out, right? Hit Juju Smith-Schuster, and everyone remembers him for that. Well, how do you think Trey Hendrickson, why do you think he was so comfortable coming here? It's because Von Bell's like, hey, man, we got one in Joe, and we have a culture that we're trying to build. Come here. And so the recruiting factor, that matters a ton as the Bengals try to get different talent in here. But Riley Reef, probably the first of what I would say is a couple offensive line additions. That's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. There are guards like Trey Turner available that they cons could consider going after. Larry Warford is another guy I would look at. You look at that right guard spot. If you have Larry Warford at right guard, and he did opt out of the 2020 season, but still you're talking about a former pro bowler, you put him next to Riley Reef, you feel pretty good about the right side of that line. So there are veterans out there that they could still look at. Now, as far as the draft is concerned, let's talk about the draft for a second because I think a lot of people are like, oh, well, they don't need Penny Sewell anymore. 
one, Riley Reef can play anywhere. So if they decide Penny Sewell's the guy at five and he's available at five, then the Bengals should take him at five if he's there. It's that simple. Because you could move Reef inside and now he can be the right guard. Penny Sewell may be the right tackle, which I think a lot of people have ruled out. There's a very real possibility that if the Bengals draft Penny Sewell, he plays on the right side, that they don't move Jonah Williams at all and you just leave it alone. Very possible. And I'm not saying that's exactly what they're going to do, but it could happen. Everyone just assumes Jonah's going to move. I don't know if that's going to be the case. But either way, the flexibility and the versatility. Jonah Williams, willing to move if he needs to. I don't think they will. Obviously, Reef willing to move. Penny Sewell, still very much on the table at five. And let's just go down the Galladay path while I got you here. Of course, if they sign Kenny Galladay, it's a boost to the Bengals wide receiver room. But that doesn't mean wide receivers out at five. You're not going to reach on another position if Jamar Chase is clearly the top player on your board. If you sign Kenny Galladay to a one-year deal, it's more of a stopgap, right? In Riley Reef, I look at it the same way. It's a stopgap. They still need to draft a tackle relatively early in the draft, even if he does end up playing right tackle and Williams at left tackle. If it's not at five, then it'll be at 38. If it's not at 38, it should be at 69. That's the first three rounds of the draft. I'd be shocked if the Bengals don't take a tackle in the first three rounds. That's just where they're at right now as they try to continue to boost the trenches and get better there in the offensive line in their quest to keep Joe Burrow upright. We've gotten a ton of new subscribers over the past couple of days. Thank you, thank you, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate it. We're excited about the direction of this channel and just know there is a ton of awesome stuff coming your way. So if you're new, hit that subscribe button, join the movement, and thank you so much for watching.